it going everybody? So we're back on the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we are putting the acid etch finish on the 5160 buoy. Now the things that we've done up to this point to be able to achieve the finish that we're going to work on today are getting the little hammer finish that we have right here that we did with the ball peen hammer on the Ricasso and the flats to get that real cool forged texture plus to get all these grind lines, those deep grind lines that are gonna give us those striations in the, the bevels. We ended up taking a rough grit belt and finishing the last bit of grinding with it. Something like this guy right here. Nice, super rough belt, lots of grit on there so that we can get some nice deep grind lines because what's gonna end up happening is whenever we acid etch this, we're going to darken the whole entire blade and then we're going to sand over all the peaks, all the high points with a 1500 grit sandpaper and it's going to bring out the still finish on those peaks while leaving the acid etched darkness down in the valleys and that's going to give us all those cool striations and then of course we're going to come over and we're going to sand over the tops of all of this and it's going to make all the little high points on that texture pop as well and it's just going to give us a real cool finish. And I'm happy because the size of this is going to make everything stand out even more versus the Krambui where it's a pretty small knife, even though technically it's like a 12 inch long knife. It's smaller than this right here, which is quite a bit larger. <laughs> so when it comes down to it, I think it's going to be awesome having this texture and everything with this big of a blade. And I'm really excited about seeing how it turns out. Now, one of the things that I was going to work on in this episode as well is the guard. Acid etching it and doing that process. But I can't do that because I had a little oopsie, a little boo-boo, a little, well, that sucks. Here's my guard. If y'all remember, when I originally showed y'all this, you know, this was all one piece. One little piece. It is no longer one piece. It is two pieces. So what ended up happening was I went through and I hardened this. So heated up, quenched it, did all that stuff. And I made the mistake of putting it on the knife just for some dumb reason. Put it on there before I actually put it in my tempering oven and tempered it. So it was still fully hardened, everything like that. And whenever I went to go and get it off, so just hammer it off a little bit, ended up snapping that whole side off of there. So because I want this knife to be absolutely perfect, I'm not gonna do anything like weld this all together. I'm just making another one of these. Luckily, I know exactly how to do it now, so I'm already most of the way through getting that one done and everything. So we're, we're already, Already on track there to make sure that I can get the handle and everything put on or start working on the handle in the next episode. So the next episode I plan on peening the guard in and working on the handle skills. So y'all see that, but for this right here, I've got to redo this piece. It sucks, but you know what? You live and you learn. You always got to think through things because, you know, shit happens. <laughs> so let's go ahead, let's jump into the acid edge for the blade get that stuff knocked out, show you how it works. Let's get it. So before we actually go through and acid etch this, we wanna go ahead, put our maker's mark on here. And my wife just made me these little stencils with her Cree cut or Cricut or what the heck ever you wanna call it. She made those for me. I put them on here, use a little bit of tape to go around it so that I'm only etching in that little area. And then I'm using my modified car battery charger thing that I did here where I got rid of the actual container for the, the charger itself, the, you know, the thing that hold all the guts. All that stuff is inside here. And then I made it to where all of this can all go inside here for storage. So it's just as big as an ammo crate, which is really nice. It still has the fan on the back side of it and all that stuff. Um, I'm going to go through and set it for a larger battery. Now one of the things that I do is I use the positive side of the car charger and that'll go on the blade 
and then I got a little alligator clip and put it on the other side for the little cotton patch that we're going to be using. These are just gun cleaning patches that I use for cleaning my guns. They're 100% cotton and they work really well doing this. So I just fold it up. Just like so. Put it in the clip. And then I've got my salt water mixture solution here. This is just actually salt and vinegar. We're going to be using it. And now one of the things that I do every once in a while whenever I go through and I hit on here it might not actually start etching instantly. So I found out a cheater way to do it. I use this piece of steel right here and you're going to see what I'm talking about whenever I actually do it. So that in there, get our piece of cotton inside here, get it nice and coated, put it on here. You can see how the lights over here are activated. It starts etching that right there and it's like a cheater way to be able to get this to instantly be able to start etching. And it's starting to get dark already. So now I'm just going to go ahead and dip it in there again. And I'm already etching. I don't know why that works that way, but it does. And it's just like a, I don't know, you wouldn't call it a cheater way. It's just a way to get it going right off the bat. And now we're etching. And we're going to hold it down for a few seconds per, per time that we're actually touching it to it. And this will give you a nice deep dark etch. And it's very simple. And there is our Maker's Mark. That simple. Stencil cut by a Cricut thing onto vinyl. I like that she used this transparent blue because you can see through it. And a battery charger with just a little alligator clip and some gun cleaning cotton patches. And voila. Now we can go ahead, clean the blade a little bit with some acetone and put it in our ferric chloride acid and get this etched. See, and this is one of the best things about this setup right here. Everything gets wrapped up and put it right back in. And there <laughs> it's my whole entire etcher setup. Super simple. Nice and out of the way. So now we need to go ahead and etch our blade. We've already cleaned everything off. This is a 50-50 ferric chloride and distilled water mixture that I've had for a little while now. It is Still pretty strong, but not as strong as it was the first time I ever used it. But this works out real well. We need to go ahead, put it in there. We're going to do our first bathing or bathing bath etching time, whatever you want to call it, for about five minutes. Let it go in there. And then we'll take it out. We'll clean it off with Windex. And then go back in, take it out, clean it off, go back in, take it out, clean it off. And then we'll end up sanding it, etching it, sanding it, 
and cleaning it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get these processes started. So on this first round of etching, all I'm going to be using is Windex and the texture on these gloves to clean it up. And the reason why we want to do that is right now you can see there's like I don't know if you can see that on here but there's little lines going this way from where we've cleaned it and did all that stuff and I want to take and rub off as many little random imperfections and all that stuff as possible because let's say you have something on top of here and it's etching it will etch around that and actually mess up your etch so you want to go through clean it a little bit wipe it down and then it goes right back into the etching get that little wipe down and then right back in and this time we're going to leave it in there for about eight minutes and then we'll take it out clean it again then go back in until we get it the darkness that we want once we get that darkness then we can go ahead and start focusing on the sanding and etching and sanding and once we're good there we'll have the nice finish that we want so let's go ahead let it soak for a little while that's the word I was looking for when I was talking about bathing it and all that stuff soaking it there you go Round number two. We're getting there. Getting darker. Alright, this next one is going to be for 10 minutes. The next two. So this is going to be for 10 minutes. And then once we're done with that, we should be able to sand the peaks off. And then we're going to go back in for another 10 minutes. Sand the peaks off, clean it, and we should be good. And that one is done. Let's take a peek at it. Yeah, I think that's good. I think we're at a point now to where we can actually sand. The high points off. Got ourselves a nice dark blade. So let's go ahead and give this a little sanding. We got our little sponge here with a 1500 grit sandpaper on it. Oh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, okay. So I'm gonna move this light so that y'all can actually see this. Oop. Uh, there we go, let's get it like that. And there is our texture. Now of course this is just the first round of it. I feel like, okay, let's see how we can get the light to there we go see that 
See all those lines? That is what we're going for right there. Oh. It's going to look absolutely awesome whenever I get done doing this a few times and then we really, really, really get a good close-up shot of it. That is starting to look absolutely awesome. Oh, that is going to be sick. All right. Finish sanding it. Back in the acid. Pull it out. Sand it. Back in the acid. go we got our striations on there both sides I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up just a little bit then we'll do the outro and I'll give you a better look all right everybody let's wrap this shop talk Tuesday up here with some of that how awesome is that? We're nice and dark. We've got those cool, go this way, there you go. Those cool textures. We got all the striations on there. There you go, now you can see them. All those lines, plus the cool transition between the flats right there. And the bevel still. I absolutely love that. I mean, that just takes it up to the next level. And then one of the cool things that happens is whenever we put the edge on it, that's going to be nice and polished. So it's just going to frame everything. And that is going to be absolutely crazy looking. <laughs> I love it. I, I am so happy with how this is turning out. I mean, this is just... <sighs> this is what I wanted. This is the type of stuff that I wanted it to look like. All those striations going through this. And that transitioning into the flats up through here. Look at that, look at how cool that looks. Coming all the way through there. Ah, that's something else. I wanna know, what do y'all think about this? Do y'all think that it was everything that you wanted it to be? <laughs> do you think it turned out absolutely awesome? Now, of course, one of the things that I still need to do is get that guard finished up, get it etched and everything done on it. So we can then put it on here. And then from that point forward, we are working on the handle. We're gonna get it fully done. It's gonna be a cool looking handle. I think y'all are gonna love it. But that's it for now. Y'all let me know, was this a success or not? Did y'all learn anything from this or not? I'm excited to hear about it, guys. Thank y'all for coming by. If y'all would, give this video a thumbs up, share this video or one of my other videos. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. We've got daily vlogs happening right now. Hopefully y'all are enjoying that. Guys, y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. And I will see y'all tomorrow.